morning, everyone. Uh, before we begin our study here, continuing to look at the line of Shamgar, uh, may we ask the Lord's blessing. Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for the time that we have to study here together. We ask for your blessing upon our study, that we can understand the things that we delve into and that we can get them correct. We need your um, Holy Spirit to teach us, and we need to learn the lessons that um, you want us to learn in our personal lives so that we can reflect Christ's character to all that we come in contact. We're thankful, Lord, for the work that you are doing in our lives, in the people around us, and that we um, can see your hand. In spite of the discouragements at times, we know, Lord, that uh, your purposes are being worked out. Be with each person as they face these struggles each day. Help the truths that we get garner, or that we gather from your word, uh, that these things um, will be able to feed us spiritually, but also feed those around us. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now, what we have here is um, the line of Shamgar, which we had finished off yesterday, just sort of in a rushed fashion for the end part of it. And we're just taking all of these symbols. Uh, that we get from from that verse, uh, Shamgar being a sword, uh, it's Anath is his father, which means an answer, uh, the slew or the killing, um, we placed at June 22nd, 2014. We'll discuss that again. And then uh, we also have uh, the 600 men, and the 600 men, and we're going to discuss this. Stephen had mentioned some things before the study. Um, now, as far as whether these dates are correct above or not, that's something we have to discuss. But as far as the symbol of 600 men, we have the symbol of 600 in Noah 600 when the flood occurs. Um, also, uh, he's going to have um, uh, dealing with, uh, how did you put that, Stephen, regarding Shem? Okay, so Noah was 502 years old when Shem was born. Yeah. Noah was how, how old? 502? Three. Yes. 502. Okay. Oh. Right. So he's going to be born uh, 98 years before the flood, and then he's going to live. 600. Years altogether. Yes, and so that's another 502 years after the flood. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. so we have this 502 doubled. Now, 502 um, represents July 18 in Millerite history because it's the... Oh, no, wait, is that right? No, never mind. Um, so 502, it's just multiplying that by... By 60 times 360. So if you take that as a number of years, you get 180720. So that's the symbol of July 18, 2020, right? And then, um, then you also addressed this idea of the 235. So we had taken the 600 men, put that into years. That's going to be 365 days is one year. And it has 235 days remaining. 235 is the number of months in a metonic cycle of 19 years. So that's a symbol of 19 years. We had uh, 235 years from the dividing of the kingdom to uh, Hoshea being taken captive in 723. Um, and then we have... Uh, no, no, I'm no, wrong. 742, 742, pardon me. I'm skipping the date there. So in 742 to the prophecy of Isaiah, 
dealing with the 65 years. And then you have 19 years. So you have 235 years, and then you have 19 years, which is 235 months. And then you said that all of the kings of Judah, they reigned for 391 years and six months, so 391.5. If we multiply that by... Um, uh, 12? By 12, so the number of days in or number of months in a year we symbolically get 200 well we get uh what is it uh, i have to do the number so 391.5 times 12 gives us four six forty four thousand six hundred ninety eight months which when divided by The number of the king, um, Judah, which is 20. Yes. So the average then is 234.9, which is almost uh, a metonic cycle, right? So 235. So they average, uh, they average this, um, basically a metonic cycle each for the 20 kings. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So they average 19 years each in that in that sense, a metonic cycle. Now, of course, if we just took literally um, the number of 391.5, if you took the actual, um, like you divided it by 19, uh, you would get 20 and a half or 20.6. So... So we're just doing that symbolically. We're not doing it literally. So but we can see that we get this 391 and this 235 connected in two different ways. Now, the way that I understand it, so in putting this on this line in October 20 to 21st, this is going to be a presentation that I do there. And I can't remember if it's the first, second, or third. I think it's the third one that I do in October 21st, so it's the third study, I do three presentations. And I believe it's in that one where I address the prophecy of, of uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. Now, at that time, I don't have the prophecy of Josiah uh, connecting it. That's not going to be until 2016. And that's going to be on July 16th, 2016 that I'm going to make that connection. But in 2014, I present the preliminary study of the prophecy of Ezekiel 4, verse 4 to 6. I don't really have why it starts in 40 years before. So I have why it would start in 977, right? That it's going to start with um, the dividing of the kingdom. But I didn't look at the prophecy of Josiah until two years later. And then it's going to be in 2016 that I put that together. So, and, and that connects the prophecy of Josiah and the prophecy of Josiah Lich. So the way that I'm looking at this line of Shamgar is this is specifically relating to um, the events that lead us to October 13th, 2018, where I can then say, it's 391 and a half years to November 9th. So that's the logic behind how this line is laid out. So you can see the significance of this 391 and the idea of the Metonic cycle, what, what that means symbolically and how it's represented in the 600 men. Um, and then, of course, the ox, the plow, that has to do with plowing. That's the line upon line, which I'm going to bring together. I'm going to bring together uh, both the prophecy of Joseph and, um, and also Ezekiel. So I'm going to bring all these things together in 2016. Now, in 2017, with Samuel Snow's letters, we then get the date, July 18th. Um, but it's also the understanding of Samuel Snow's letters in connection with 
um, the story of Ezra chapter uh, 7 to 10, dealing with uh, a further understanding of the chiastic structure that occurs in 457 and how it connects to Samuel Snow's letters. So with all, all of this being done, I can't get to noon on October 13th, 2018 to confirm November 9th, 2019. Right? So that's why we say that Shamgar relates to this message having to do with everything from the line upon line introduction and how that develops in the understanding of the chronology so that October 13th, 2018 can occur. Does that make sense to people? <clears throat> I would have to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty compelling that, you know, everything that we've done with taking the story of the judges and how we've been laying this out, that we can see that these are messages. And uh, the enemy here, particularly the darkness here, would just be a lack of an understanding of chronology. That is, we have inherited, inherited a chronology from the Philistines, right, from the Protestants. And that had hindered this movement in being able to understand uh, things correctly. And so it's going to be this unfolding that occurs here that, um, that relates to this issue. Now, there are things that we could do um, even with this line of Shamgar, because some of this line, I mean, relates to me personally. I mean, all of these except maybe the June 22nd, 2014 date, other than that this is the empowerment of a message that's going to uh, be developed here, right? So with the line upon line introduced on October 5th, 2012. Now, we have an increase of knowledge that occurs here. Um, and, and then it's going to be manifested on August 31st, 2013. Now, I mean, different dates could be given. So maybe having these spe specific dates isn't always um, as clear as it could be, you know, why we have to have these specific dates. We could be more vague. But these are just camp meetings. My first camp meeting that I present, this is going to be, um, this is, you know, first camp meeting that's uh, in Alberta, um, just a weekend camp meeting that I organized. This one here, August 31st, that's the last day of a camp meeting, and that's organized by the Canadian group. Um, and I'm partly organizing that too. I picked the venue which they weren't happy with because it was too rustic. But <laughs> um, at that August 31st date, Jeff is there and proposes a question, which I then answer, right? Now, as far as this, this killing, the slaying that occurs, um, we're putting this here as the empowerment of what was answered here. So, I mean, why we have the word slew why it's a slaying of the philistines this would be the understanding of the first day of the fifth month and the first day of the first month and this becomes extremely important in understanding all of this that leads you know so there's just this logical progression of what happens with these camp meetings in regard to the dates the chronology these very specific dates Okay, so I, I don't know. Um, the, the one date that I, I kind of wish was in here, and but it's not, and that is uh, the date on the Mayan calendar. But that's, that's part of another line. 
And the reason why I say this is June 22nd, 2014, Jeff marks this for what reason? This camp meeting in Arkansas. Why does he look at this date? What does he connect June 22nd with? The um, School of the Prophets. Yeah, so it's the, it's the School of the Prophets. It's the first camp meeting really put on by the School of the Prophets, though they're going to have it at the Lambert Church because uh, the school is not large enough yet. They just started uh, building the school, right? So they have... Uh, the one house and they have uh, the garage with the, uh, with the rooms there. So um, I guess what they call that, uh, I can't remember what they call the rooms at a school, but anyway, so, so they have it at Lambert church. Now I, um, now I'm not, I'm not going to be there. Um, I'm going to be at the one into in the fall. 2014. Yeah. I don't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so this is going to be at Lambert Church on June 22nd, that they're going to have this camp meeting. And that's Noel who's going to be presenting that. But Jeff notes that it's three years to the day from when he receives $165,000 to begin the School of the Prophets. Now, between those two dates, June 22nd, 2011, and June 22nd, 2014, is the date on the Mayan calendar, December 21st, 2012. Now, this October 5th date, 2012, is um, 77 days prior to uh, December 21st, 2012. So, but that's a different line, right? So that, that has to do more with my personal line. But so this October 5th date is connected symbolically to the center date between June 22nd, 2011 and June 22nd, 2014. So, so there's a significance in that 77 days that starts off this line to the center of these other two dates. But those dates aren't on this line. The, only this date is. So, so it is on another line, though. Right. But on this line, it isn't. I, I kind of wish it was. <laughs> but it would be part of this increase of knowledge that's occurring. So there's an increase of knowledge that is occurring here. And that Mayan date ends up being 77 days after October 5th. <clears throat> but when we get to this camp meeting here, um, that question that Jeff poses that then is answered is going to be slain, so to speak, on June 22nd, 2014. So when we deal with this symbol of slain, how do we justify the slain being the empowerment of the first message, the word slain? Because we know the second angel arrives when the 600 men are slain, but we're putting the word slain there as the empowerment of the first message. So in Judges, how do we take that word slain from this one verse that we have for Shamgar? And how are we addressing it then with this proclamation? So he's going to kill, right, 600 men, but we're using the word kill to mark this waymark. And how do we do that? Well, one way we can do it, if you look at the Hebrew word that's translated as slew, other translations translated as kill, uh, what is the Hebrew number? So we'll just look at it here. So what's the Hebrew number?
Are you showing it there as 5221? Yes. So if you read that number backwards, what is it? 1225. Which is? December 25th. And who presents on June 22nd, to, uh, 2014? Didn't you just say Noel? Yeah, Noel. So does Noel have anything to do with December 25th? Well, I mean, as, as we have noted before, the name Noel yeah. would be have a connection with that day. Okay. So, so that would, to me, to be a symbolic representation of why that word is going to mark Noel's presentation. Right? Okay. Okay. Now... Uh, the word naka uh, means to strike lightly or severely, literally or figuratively. That is beat, cast forth, clap, give wounds, go forward, kill, make, slaughter, murder, punish. It has all these different uh, definitions, wound. Um, is there any way that we can take the meaning of that word and then place it uh, with what Noel does on June 22nd, 2014. So we've taken just the symbol symbol of the Hebrew number in reverse. So how is, in a sense, he killing? Because if he's killing something, what is he killing? Would we be saying that that would be the <clears throat> setting aside of the Protestant understanding, the killing of the Protestant understandings? Yeah, so, there, so it has to be connected with the killing of this error. And since, since the name <clears throat> Noel mm -hmm. is from the French... and is to symbolize the day, December 25th. Yeah. We have a couple of tie-ins with other portions of Scripture because we know what happened within France. So... This tie-in is a lot more pregnant with, with meaning than we may have might have originally thought. Yeah. Now the name Noel, uh, the normal sum in gematria is forty-six. The normal sum. Yeah. So the normal sum. The product is twelve. Twelve thousand six hundred. So that's a hundred or ten times twelve sixty. So it's, in a way, another fractal of 2520. Yeah, but it also relates to uh, the 1260 and the 46 years. Right. Okay. So that brings us to 1844 from 1798, 46 years. And we know the 1260, of course, starts in... 538, but we have in 508, we have the baptism of Clovis. So we have that symbol there of December 25th. And we also have my baptism um, in 1982 on Christmas Day and, and the symbol of Christmas Day dealing with our line um, and Nashville as well. So, so this December 25th also ties together um, the understanding of this message, right? It, it, it's symbolized in this message in various ways. Now, we then have um, going, getting back to the line here. So we then have, of course, the 600 men represented on 
um, October 20th to 21st. So I, I can't remember. I think I do one presentation on the 20th and two on the 21st. And if I remember correctly, but we're going to put the 600 men there. Now, as far as try, tying it to, we, we have the 235, right? And the 365. So we can take 600 and create these two uh, symbols of time. And we can, of course, divide 365 by 235 to get the 391, which is going to be proclaimed on October 13th, 2018. So that's going to be the opening up of this message to this people. That's going to open up a whole bunch of things. It's the deliverance or to be open um, that happens on October 13th. Um, but that's going to be the arrival of the third. So that's going to be a message um, that's connected with a closed door. Um, and then we have, of course, these camp meetings. And, well, this camp meeting in 2014. And then I have July 16th, 2016. And then September 23rd, 2017. So these are going to be specific parts of this message. Uh, 2014, we introduced the three, the prophecy of Ezekiel. We have then, of course, uh, Ezekiel now connected to Revelation 9. September 23rd, we have now connected to Samuel Snow's letters. And that all comes together on October 13th, 2018. So it's an arrival of a third message. Um, so the 600 men make sense there uh, because of my spe specific presentation having to do with chronology to the movement as a whole. Um, and so we have this, this preliminary part, which we call the first angel's message, and then arrives the second angel's message. And that message is testing this people. Now, on October 13th, I do this presentation. Now, connected to that is the fact that uh, Tess, who is not there, she left uh, prior to that date. So she was, I can't remember which date she left. It was like the 10th or 9th or 7th or something. Um, but she's not there for October 13th. And this is going to be... Um, Daniel from Brazil presenting at Lambert Church. And I'm there uh, doing this calculation because he's talking about the 126 days that end on October 13th. And I do this calculation and find that the date the tests gave 10 days earlier is exactly from noon, October 13th, 391 and a half days to the start of November 9th, 2019. And so that's pretty profound. And, uh, Jeff thinks it's profound. Parminder thinks it's profound. Um, we present this at the camp meeting starting on October 16th. Um, uh, so that's going to be part of that. So, I mean, there's what I find, but it also continues. But that message is still going to be rejected. So even though it has its time in which it's presented, it's going to be rejected. So by the time we get to... Um, November, uh, Jeff has gone to, he's going to go to um, uh, Brazil. And when he gets back from Brazil, he's now cold to this message. So Jeff, and, and that he's been warned about me. Uh, he's been told all kinds of things about me. And, and so he's now going to soften on all these things that he had first accepted. So I can't remember the, the date that he gets back, but but this is what ends up happening. So so there's a bunch of stuff happening behind the scenes that I don't know about at the time. I can see that Jeff is cold towards me. Um, and uh, I know that I do a presentation on the book of Ezekiel in November, November 8th or something like that. And Jeff... Um, I know there he's acting cold towards me and I can't figure out why, but he had got back from Brazil. So he wasn't there very long. I think that's correct. I could be wrong. Or maybe he wasn't there. He got back, but he didn't show up. 
to that presentation. I can't remember, but there's something about it anyway. Um, so, so this is a message that's rejected, similar to what happens October 22nd, 1844. So there's a rejection of this message that goes on. Um, so anyway, uh, are people happy with this line of Shamgar? There's a lot of information here. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of information. And, and that's why I, I go over it again, you know. So when we look at the judge's line, uh, what I have here is that these messages of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar are the arrival of the first message on the judge's line at 9-11. And uh, they're going to lead to the formalization of the message, which occurs from October 13th, 2018 till September 7th, 2019. And this is going to be this. Um, uh, this is going to be this period, what we call the formalization of the message. So in this time, we have a. I mean, the message is formalized. I'm saying there, but it takes time for it to formalize. So when I give the three ninety one point five, it is finally going to be accepted, and that's going to be this battle dealing with. Uh, Parminder, right? So by September 7th, Jeff wakes up um, during the rebellion at Bay, Bay El Peor, right? And he, he sees what's going on. And so he... And, and this formalization then is going to lead finally to uh, the story of Gideon, right? That's going to be specific to our line. And we, so we've already gone through this. We just haven't drawn out this line of Deborah and Barak, right? So that's something that we need to do. So I'm just going to copy this slide here. Okay. So now we have this line here again, just on another page. And we're going to have to draw a line below it. So I'm just going to borrow Shamgar's line here. So this is now going to be Deborah and Barak. Barak have two R's. I kind of think so. Mm -hmm. No, it has one R. And it only has a K like this. There we go. Okay, so obviously these, we're going to have to read the verses themselves and go over this again. And this becomes a much more complicated line. Now, even though we have a line, whoops, that, um, you know, is marking a specific waymark, when we expand out that line, the waymarks in that line can go beyond, um, beyond the line itself, right? So it's not like they have to just be between the other waymarks. So I'm just getting this set up here. So here's here's our line. We don't know anything about it yet. But when we look at uh, Judges chapter 4, we have a fairly complex line that we're going to have to look at. And um, we already addressed some of these points. So uh, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. 
So one of the things we see here is that it's going to go back to Ehud. So why does it go back to Ehud and not to uh, Shamgar? Stephen? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you did. Well, so, so we have Deborah and Barak. And, and I thought there was something about what Ellen White said, because we have Shamgar, who's mentioned, but he's going to be in the West, right? Ehud's in the East. And it's going to just, it's not going to talk about when Shamgar is dead. It's going to talk about when Ehud, Ehud is dead. That we're going to have right. um, Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Hereshit of the Gentiles, right? So, so that means we're continuing this from Ehud, right? If we're gonna chronologically place it, we don't know exactly where Shamgar is as far as he seems to be in the same period of time as Ehud, right? Stephen, is that correct? I don't hear you. You're not. Your mic is muted. Hello? Yes, now can I can hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> yes, the understanding is that the Shem, Shangar is uh, around that time of Ehud. Yeah. So he doesn't follow him. He's, oh. he's at the same time, but just in the West instead of in the East. Yes. Okay. Now, um, so this is going to be at the end of, I, I believe it's what, 80 years that Ehud? Um, yes, he judges. For 80 years? Yeah. That's going to be uh, four score. Years, so it's going to be 80 years. The land has rest, and now they're going to be under the uh, the oppression of Jabin, king of Canaan. And um, the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, and he had 900 chariots of iron. And 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. Now we address this 20 years, um, and how did we do that? Does anybody remember? Because we're going to start this line, this this period of oppression, where? How did we address this in when we were dealing with this history? I mean, I don't really blame people for forgetting. So we have 20 years. Um, and how do we well, mark it, 20 years? What's that? Was it from, uh, from 2001 to 2021, maybe? Right. So so we're, we're going to do that. So we're going to take that 20 years going to 2021. Um, we're going to have some other... Uh, ideas that that come from this we're also going to deal with uh, 20 years and 20 months All right so we're going to deal with 20 months and we're, we're also going to address a period of 220 months 
right? So we're we're there's also 360 months that we address, uh, which would be months on our calendar. So there's different ways that we we address this period of time. Um, so I'll show you the chart here that that we had made. Whether anybody understood it or not, that may be another question. So what we have here, this was addressing, uh, here we have August 29th, 2019. So that's going to be uh, Stephen Odilio and John Mark being brought before the papal tribunal um, where they're going to be asked to recant, right? Recant their understanding of July 18th that I've deceived them and et cetera, et cetera. So they're not going to recant. And then, um, and then that's going to be nine days before September 7th, 2019, when Jeff wakes up. Now, we know that we connected this August uh, 29, 2019 to two period of 220 years from August 29th, 1799, right? I believe that's correct. Okay. So so we're taking this August 29th date. So somehow we have to take these dates and we have to be able to put these on a line. So we, we have them on a line, we just don't have them marked. But we can go back from that 20 lunar months to January 15th, um, 2018. Now, January 15th, 2018 is 20, um, 20 months from September 7th, 2019, I have there. Um, so that's obvious, obviously uh, prophetic months because it's not, it's not calendar months or they, they would be the same date. So that would be, uh, if we look at that, that's going to be a period of... Um, 600 days, right? So 600 days from January 15th, 2018 to September 7th, 2019. It's um, 600 days, which is 20 months. And, um, and then we can, um, 20 for prophetic months, and we can see that that relates to the difference between 20 prophetic months and 20 lunar months is nine days, right? So this January 15th date, the significance of it is that it's the, the start of the 200th month from September 11th, 2001. Right. So, um, and that's, uh, I believe, again, uh, lunar months. So this has to do with the story of Ezra. We had taken these accounts in the story of Ezra. And we had uh, prophetic months, and we had lunar months, and we counted from August 22nd, 2001, which is the first day of the eighth month. So September 11th happens in um, eighth month, 2001. I don't know. That doesn't seem to be correct. At 20... Years of age, the candidates for priesthood began their training. Yeah, okay. So I don't know if that relates to it or not. But is that hmm? September the ninth month. September's the ninth month. Yeah, so that's but this is the first day of the eighth month I put there on this chart, August twenty second, two thousand one. I'm trying to figure out why. It shouldn't be the eighth month, it should be the sixth month. So I think that's a typo. Um so if I go to 2001, uh, August 22nd is uh, the sixth month. So that's just a typo. Okay, so I'm going to change that. First day yeah. of the eighth month, sixth month. There we go. Yeah. Was that there? Yep. Because that was the start of the month. Yeah. And that relates to the, to the month you had done, the 354 months, or 354 days. 457. Right. Yeah, so in 497, 
the first day of the first month would begin on August 22nd, 2001. And the next year, the first day of the first month would be April 5th, 2030. So that would be the 255th month would begin, right? So the, the, the year, if we're taking Ezra, we're taking that year of 354 days from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month. And we give a day for a month that is lunar months. The first day of the first month would be August 22nd, 2001. And the first day of the first month that ends that 354 months would be April 5th, 2030, right? So that's how we related it to that line, okay? But we also counted uh, prophetic months from September 11th, 2001. When we do that, 354 months ends with the... Uh, with uh, the Day of Atonement in 2030. So we had two different ways that we counted that. So, so one of the things we can see here is that this story dealing with Deborah and Barak is addressing uh, certain aspects of the chronology. Now, how did I first arrive at April 5th, 2030? When and how? Didn't we begin addressing this about six months ago? Okay, but when did I first arrive at April 5th, 2030? As the first day of the first month. What study? What year did I figure that out? I ignored it at the time. I'm not recalling the exact study. Okay, so it's going to be the week of Christ study. It's going to be presented uh, in 2000, uh, in 2018. It's going to be presented in Alberta. Jeff is going to be there. And, and Jeff starts out his presentation with uh, talking about Stephen's uh, counting of the the period from Pentecost in 31 AD to October 22nd in 1844, right? So he's going to be talking about that when he starts out his presentations. But I'm going to do a presentation on the week of Christ. And in the week of Christ study, I note that if we continue moving this forward, we're going to have the first day of the first month as April 5th, 2030. But... I, I don't do anything with it because even though I'm using this chart sort of for time setting, so to speak, because I'm not initially doing that. I'm just analyzing the week of Christ. But I see once we introduce time that I could move this forward and, and I could end up with um, a date in the future. That would be the first day of the first month, April 5th, 2030. But instead, I, I don't go that far. I just move it to um, 2019. That's as far as I'm going to, to look ahead prior to hearing about November 9th, 2019. And I'm going to mark the date that ends up being the betrayal of, of Christ by Judas, which is going to be when the, the movement has is now transferred over to Parminder. And... Uh, Part of the person involved in that that I mark is uh, Bronwyn, right? Judas betraying uh, Jeff, right? <clears throat> so that's that's how I come to understand it. So that's going to be in 2018. So in in 2018. Um, I'm going to be doing these these studies um, relating to uh, um, well, there's a whole bunch of things I'm doing at that time. Now, specifically at this time, because the date there, I'm just going to look at this January 15th date. I haven't really ever marked anything in it, um, but in 2000. 
18. Uh, where are we here? January 15th, 2018. Um, what I'm addressing, what we're addressing in this movement has to do with, um, there's a division going on um, with uh, the, the group from Alabama at that time. And, and part of the thing that's being addressed there has to do with the fall of Babylon in 538. So I'm actually writing a paper at that time and addressing this in, uh, in January of 2018. So how would that relate to any of this? So I, I don't have a specifically a specific event on January 15th. I can't tell you what I was doing exactly that day or how it relates. But in 2017, I know what I was studying. Now, the 15th happens to be a Sunday. So this is actually pretty significant. So I know what I was doing that day uh, in 2017. Uh, 17, but I don't know what I was doing in 2018. But uh, but if I'm studying regarding the fall of Babylon, because I know I was studying that, that's going to be a Monday, actually, January 15th, 2018. It's the, the beginning of the 200th month from September 11th, if we're going to count uh, prophetic months. And then we're going to have 20 months to September 7th, to completing this period of 220 months. I know this is getting rather detailed, but if I'm addressing the fall of Babylon, does the fall of Babylon have any symbolic representation that we can note that's going to connect us to this period of 220 Okay, what date does Babylon fall? It's uh, October 13th. Yeah, so October 13th, 539 BC. So we know it's going to relate to um, this line, right? Because I'm actually going to say that... Um, Deborah and Barack is marked from October 13th, 2018 to September 7th, 2019. Is that fair enough? To see that that's going to relate to, to this? And so the, so the fall of Babylon on October 13th, that it is connected to the proclamation of the 391.5 um, on October 13th, 2018. So why, why does that matter? How, how do we then relate this to Deborah and Barack? How are we going to take Deborah and Brack? How are we going to take the start of this line? So there's lots of different ways we can do it. So, I mean, Deborah and Brack is specifically going to, to end where? Because where does Parminder's line end dealing with Sisera? You know, maybe we could start there, just giving the end of it.
Are we going to end it at September 7th or are we going to end it at November 9th, 2019? When we ended it November 9th. Yeah. So so we can put this way mark here, right? We can we can say this is eleven nine. We'll just use that. Oops. Backwards. Okay. So eleven nine twenty nineteen. That's gonna be the end of this line uh, of Uh, Sister's line, right? So Deborah and Barack end there. That's an arrival of a third message. So at least we can we can start there to see if that makes sense. And then when we get back to uh, this chart here, um, we're going to see that this is from November 9th, 1989 to November 9th, 2019. It's obviously 30 years, but it's 360 months. And uh, we have some echo dates like May 29th, 2021 that are going to address uh, not specifically this line, but other lines. So this, this chart here um, isn't specifically just addressing the story of Gideon and Brack. It's, it's addressing other things. But in there, we can see that this part of it um, occurs here. So we got this uh, September 7th date being this 20 months. This is the period of oppression. Um, now, we're saying the period of oppression then um, is 20 months, but that's for 20 years but I'm taking that it actually represents a longer period. Now, we could take it as 220 months. How could we relate um, 220 months? I, I mean, the question is, where are we going to start this period of oppression? I mean, we could start it somewhere in just Parminder's own understanding, but but we're dealing with a reform line. So we have a period of oppression that we're saying is um, Canaanite oppression, right? And uh, that Parminder is, so this is Jabin, king of Canaan, and Parminder is, his message is being represented by Sisera. Right. So this has to do with and Sisera, which dwelt in Harosheth of the Gentiles. Whatever that means. Symbolically. I mean, it means the woodland, literally. Right. City in the north of the land of Canaan on the west coast of the lake Miram. And we made some connection dealing with uh Miram, what that was. I don't know if people remember. Anybody remember any of this? I'm not directly recalling it. Okay. Well, okay. So, I mean, I'm looking here at some stuff. So, Miram, uh, which means uh, the high place, the waters of Miram, a lake formed by the River Jordan, about 10 miles north of the Sea of Galilee. It is a place memorable in the history of the conquest of Palestine here. Joshua completed, completely routed the Confederacy of the Northern Chiefs under Jabin. It is a remarkable fact that though by common consent, the waters of Maram are identified with the lake through which the Jordan runs between Panium, here they say Banias, that's Panium, and the Sea of Galilee. 
So these are, this is a lake. Um, the Jordan runs between Panium and the Sea of Galilee. So we took some significance there regarding Panium. Because Panium is going to be on our line July 18th. So what would the Sea of Galilee be, be then? I think uh, Galilee has been connected to a turning point. Okay, so it's a turning point, right? Um, so this is going to be this place where this battle is, uh, right? Or at least this is where Sisera is from, and there's it's going to be in this area. That we're going to have this um, there's more to it than that of course but it's in that general area this is where um, um, Sisera and Javan the king of Canaan uh, he reigned in Hazor right so that's another place in that general area uh, it's in the area of Naphtali between Rama and Kadesh uh, and on the high ground overlooking the lake of Merah. So there are other places called um, Hazor, but this is the one. So this is going to be in that general area. <clears throat> So, so we have this oppression. This oppression is for 20 years. And, and so we have to decide when this oppression begins. So we have November 9th as the end of this oppression. Now we have 20 prophetic years that goes from September 11th, um, 2001 to... Uh, May 29th, 2001. We also have 20 literal years, that is solar years, from September 11th, 2001 to September 11th, 2021. Uh, but we're not choosing uh, to mark this as the end, right? So this oppression, um, we're going to say that, it, that it's ending on November 9th. So we're going to take this Instead of these 20 years, we're going to take these, these years and we're going to turn them into 220 months, which is divided in 200 and 220, so to speak. That's how I've done it, but whether that's the best way to do it or not. Now, if we go to the 200th lunar month, that's going to bring us to September 23rd, 2017. But that's going to be counting from August 22nd, 2001. So that's going to be the, uh, the first month is going to start there, in which September 11th occurs. And then September 23rd, 2017 is going to be the first day of the seventh month. That's the... Revelation 12 sign prophecy, the woman clothed with the sun, that is, the sun is in Virgo. Uh, the moon is under her feet, that occurs on the first day of the month, that you see the moon at the feet of Virgo. She's got a crown of 12 stars, that's uh, Mercury, uh, Venus, and Mars, that are included there with the nine stars of Regulus, uh, or Leo. 
I guess it was Regulus as one of the stars. So Leo, so Leo's the constellation above the head of Virgo. And uh, so Leo represents a lion, which is a king. Regulus is the main star there, but you're going to have nine stars, and then you're going to have these three planets, which are also stars, above her head. So she's crowned with 12 stars. She's clothed with the sun. She has the moon under her feet, and she's about to be delivered. She's in labor pains. And the planet Z Jupiter has been in her womb for nine months after the conception comet entered her womb. So then Jupiter is going to appear, and Jupiter is then going to leave her womb at this time. And that's when I'm going to, that's a failed prediction, by the way. So the Revelation 12 sign prophecy is a failed evangelical prediction that uh, the 1260 years are going to begin on that date. And instead of them beginning, it's going to be a proclamation of July 18th at Lambert Church. But it is a failed prediction, just like the Mayan calendar one is a failed prediction. So that's going to be the start of the 200th month um, from the, the first month being the month in which September 11th occurs. And then we would have, uh, from that date, we have 777 days to November 9th. But we have all of of these other symbols we can take the 200th um, uh, prophetic month and we can bring us to january 15th um it'd bring us a little further if we uh, used uh months of 30 days or 30.44 days uh, our months but anyway so what do we have here how do we how do we then put this on a line if we're going to give the start of this? So I'm just going to go. Hopefully people have that in their mind enough. So we're going to say it's going to end 11-9-2019. That's going to be the end of Cicero. Um, so what are we going to start this at? So we're going to have a period of oppression. So there's going to be the darkness here. We, we haven't. So, I mean, maybe what we have a time of the end. Right. So we have a time of the end. When does the time of the end begin? When does the 200 year or the, the 20 years of oppression end? So, I mean, obviously they don't end right at that moment, but they're being oppressed for 20 years. And then you have a time of the end. And so the time of the end is what event in the story of Deborah and Barak. I know that's, I've taken the long way around, but I wanted you to think it through what we're doing. So if we go back to this again, oops, sorry about that, I have to do this again, went too fast. So we have to put the time of the end somewhere either 2017, right, September 23rd, or we would just January 15th, 2018, that period of time. So, so this is now a period of oppression. So we're saying the period of oppression starts at September 11th. Does that seem fair enough? Are we being oppressed by Parminder? I mean, because we have a reform line. So the reform line is a message that's going to counter Parminder's message. Does Parminder's oppression begin in September 11th, 2001? Now, remember, 
Parminder is Sisera, or his message is represented by Sisera. This would actually be uh, the king, the king of Canaan, uh, Jabin, king of Canaan. So how would we mark that oppression? How would we mark this as a message that's oppressing this movement? And why September 11th, if, if that's going to be the beginning of the oppression? People follow what I'm doing? Because we're not looking at the message of Parminder as the oppression, right? He's just going to be the general at that time when the time of the end arrives. Do we agree on that? Yes. Okay. So the, the oppression is Jabin, the king of Canaan. Okay. Now, Jabin, the name Jabin, uh, refers to intelligence. Right? Now, literally, it means whom God observes. But it has to do, it means intelligent. So um, it means basically it's a type of intelligence we would call analytical. Uh, to separate mentally or distinguish, that is generally understand, attend, consider, be cunning, diligent, direct, discern, eloquent, feel, inform, instruct, have intelligence, know, look well to, mark, perceive, be prudent, regard, skill, teach, think cause to make, to get, to give, to have, understanding, uh, view, and deal wise or wisely or wise men, right? So, so how are we under an oppression that can be represented by this sort of um, analytical ability that's, that Javen represents by his name? Okay, so what specifically happens on September 11th that could represent this type of oppression that's going to be manifested in Parminder's teachings? Could we connect this to spiritual formation? I think we'd have to. Okay. Is par what Parminder doing the same as spiritual formation? If it isn't, it's at least opening the door for it. Right. So Parminder's, you know, having people watching videos at double speed. Is that a type of spiritual formation? There again, if it's not spiritual formation, it's at least mesmerism. Yeah, which which spiritual formation is? It's hypnotism, right? It's a type of self hypnosis. It's a way yeah. of it's a means of self deception to make you feel spiritual when you're not. Right, right. That's that's really what the spiritual exercises are. It's a type of self brainwashing. So that you can you can do evil while you think you are doing good you deceive yourself and you have no uh problem deceiving others because the end justifies the means right it's it's the jesuits right so parminder is not a jesuit 
but he is acting like a Jesuit. And of course, he has sympathy with the Jesuits, right? Because um, who's, the, who's the good pope? To him, the black pope is the good pope. Well, well, in this case, Francis is the first Jesuit. Um, right, the black pope. pope. Right. So he's the first Jesuit, and he's good as far as Parminder and Tess are concerned. Right? That Benedict who just passed away, he would be bad because, you know, he's conservative. Yes, agreed. Yeah. So, um, so they have this sympathy with the, the methods of Jesuitism. He, he openly admitted he used deception, um, you know, basically bragged that he used deception to gain. Now, the way it was is it's like I had to use deception because of the conservatives controlling this movement. Um, if I had been open and honest, I wouldn't have been a part of the movement. I wouldn't be in the position I am today, right? So it was an excuse for using deception because of the evil that existed. So him, the, to him, the end justifies the means, which is, of course, a satanic principle, right? So... Correct. Yeah. So, so we can see here that this is something that is an enemy that had not been defeated, right? It's Jabin, the king of Canaan. He's in the land of Israel. He's a Canaanite king. And he's oppressing uh, this movement. Now, Parminder, you know, personally, he's been in this movement before September 11th. So you've been around for a while. I mean, he's obviously a, a lot younger when he joined this movement. But whether, you know, he's had these plans all along, whether he's been deceptive this whole time, I would think that he was never a conservative, truly. Um, he just um, took on a disguise. Now, Cicero... Um, the name Cicero, we don't know its origin. At least uh, the dictionaries I have don't know its its origin, what the name Cicero means. Uh, there might be dictionaries that guess at it, but uh, we just don't know where that name comes from. So it's it's sort of a hidden name. And so this oppression is occurring at this time. Now, 2017... So when I look at the September 23rd date and I look at that that's the 200th lunar month that begins then, um, it must be the time of the end. Now it has 114 days that connects it to the 200th month, prophetic month um, in 2018. But, but I, I think it must have something to do with that history. Uh, specifically, um, in 2017, so I do these presentations on um, basically it's it's uh, taking Ezra seven to ten. So it's a study in the Book of Ezra, and then when I do this presentation, I also have Samuel Snow's letters because I'm connecting 457 BC to Millerite history, right? So that's what I'm doing. With Samuel Snow's letters, I can make these connections. And then I do this presentation about July 18th being a symbol of the prediction before night, before midnight. And I've, I've tied this structure of Samuel Snow's letters together with the May 2nd date that um, Blessings had produced, that part that uh, Tabo was promoting as being the symbol of the prediction before midnight. And so I'm in a sense seeing how these different views can be reconciled, right? Because I'm a peacemaker. I want to bring people together. And, and yet, you know, we have Dwayne Dewey who's hurt because July 18th, which he believes is the symbol of the prediction before midnight is rejected. 
and May 2nd is being promoted, as well as Parminder being promoted, which he doesn't like. Um, so we have also a prophecy, right? So we have a prophecy. It's a failed prediction. But can we mark September 23rd as the time of the end? Because it's the end of a time prophecy. Again, I kind of apologize for all this roundabout way of dealing with it, but I want you to see that if we put September 23rd here, this way. That, I mean, here we have um, a date that that I think is significant in, in this line, as you see, as we begin to lay out this line. Now, how many days is it from September 23rd, 2017 to November 9th, 2019? Seven hundred and seventy seven days. So we're going to have this Deborah and Barack line of 777 days preceding our line, which is going to be the line of Gideon, um, addressing uh, the proclamation of July 18, 2020. That's going to begin on November 9th, 2019 and end December 25th, 2021. So does that seem reasonable? take one of these it makes a good point yeah so i i think it it becomes a um a valid line in in how it's it's set up it's we we've, we've followed uh, all the rules that we've been using before and i do it this way Put 777 days here. Okay, so that makes should make sense to people. <clears throat> so we have this oppression of Sisera but it's going to be Deborah and Barak that are going to be um, the messages. That are going to be an increase of light so that when we get to November 9th, 2019, we have a third angel's message arrive and we have a closed door. And this is, and this message is going to be, in in some ways, about November 9th, but it's it's really going to be about July 18th and the whole seven 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 structure <clears throat> that's going to follow this 777 days. Now we should be able to see kind of the the events that are going to unfold in this history the dates um because we need a formalization of this message so september 23rd is is the arrival of a message so we need to know what that message is it's going to be formalized it's going to be empowered and then a second message is going to arrive and then there's going to be a formalization and an empowerment and and that should be relatively easy to see um, how we're going to do this tomorrow.
But I want people to think about this line. So, you know, keep this in mind. Now, not all the events, you may not exactly remember them, but you know, we have from September 23rd, we're gonna have events in 2018, right? Um, we're gonna have uh, a message of time that's gonna be given to this movement. So that's gonna be, we mark it at sunset beginning um, on June 19th, 2018. Maybe that's where we have a message formalized. It's gonna be empowered somewhere. And we have dates that occur in 2018. We have also um, uh, the events that are gonna be separating a group of people. So there's a separation that occurs with the arrival of the second angel's message. And then we have an, a formalization of that message and, it's, and an empowerment of that message. And then the arrival of the third message, which happens on November 9th, 2019. Now on November 9th, 2019, um, I'm going to be in Arkansas presenting so it's not even just about, uh, um, you know, the date there that was chosen. I'm in Arkansas and I'm presenting on the 273. I was given only like the Sabbath school uh, to present, but they gave me an afternoon study at um, the request of uh, Toby. So he requested that I speak in the afternoon again. So I, I sort of complete, completed that. And in that, I actually address um, September 23rd, 2017. Now, I know September is the ninth month, but it used to be the seventh month. And uh, I look at this as also representing uh, 273, just in a roundabout way. Okay, so any questions before we close with prayer? Not at this time. Okay, well, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for the time we've had here this morning. I know we've had lots of things to think about and regarding Shamgar and how it relates to our message, and now here dealing with uh, Deborah and Brack. I pray that you can help each person to study these things for themselves, that you can teach each one that any point that we are missing, that you can instruct us and correct us. Um, be with us throughout this day. May your angels watch over us, and may you guide and direct in our personal study. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.